my name is Ash Lopez. I am a queer Chicana homofabulous programmer. And um, I was born in Southeast LA. Um, I grew up in a small conservative town of Antelope Valley. At the age of 17, I decided to stop hiding and I decided to come out of the closet. I decided to take action. At the age of 19, I decided to um, create a safe space, um, also known as a Gay Straight Alliance, on my local community college. In this safe space, um, it was a very vital club. It wasn't just a, um, a safe space or a school club. It was vital to our survival as queer students in a very um, homophobic environment. Our safe space allowed us to express ourselves. Our safe space allowed us to hold meetings and to organize and to ensure that our rights were being protected as students on campus. And we were informed about our rights in um, locally, in the local area, and the national level. Um, the safe space was really, you know, really impactful in our lives and it allowed us to create leaders. It allowed us to create activists that really created change within the um, academic sphere for queer students. And so safe spaces also allowed us to train our professors and to let them understand our needs and our demands as students, why we weren't feeling safe on campus, why we were being harassed, um, how they could address those issues. Training our professors and training our staff on campus also helped us to retain more queer community students on campus. Um, so I like to kind of like throw myself in the fire and go into really, um, into areas that there isn't a lot of intersectional people. So how can we make um, tech space more um, inclusive of queer people more inclusive of women of color, more inclusive of people of color, more inclusive of people with um, disabilities. So, um, yeah. Creating a safe space usually revolves around a human rights issue. And what human rights issue are we facing right now? Well, oppression within the tech industry is a human rights issue. Uh, discrimination, inequality, and poverty are cl closely linked together. So if these are closely linked together, why not address tech's diversity problem as a human rights issue? So if culture is the operating system that humans run on, um, oppression and marginalization is a malicious software, and activism and organizing is the tech to combat that. So um, by organizing and becoming activists within these um, safe spaces, we could really make a tech a much more inclusive space than it are than it already is, which is not inclusive. Um, as marginalized people, we deserve to feel safe from harassment and discrimination in all tech spaces. We deserve access to tech skills, we deserve access to tech jobs, and we deserve access to fair pay in these industries. We deserve to inhabit the tech world with dignity. So a safe space is a type of ha hacker space, right? Um, this hacker space is, um, this hacker space is an innovative way to make people feel comfortable expressing their ideas on how we could improve the industry. Um, safe spaces really need to be sometimes exclusive, which means um, people, allies, people who consider themselves as allies sometimes may not be able to access these spaces. Only marginalized people should have access to these spaces when asked. Um, So teaching um, people how to code can only go so far. You need to um, teach marginalized communities how they could address their um, inequalities in the workplace, how they're going to deal with harassment in the workforce, how they um, could organize within their workplaces and change policies on um, a structural level, um, how they could address HR with these complaints and to make sure that their voices are heard. Um, so today I challenge you to create groups that have an understanding of intersectional critical discourse, to have an understanding of um, racial and system, racial, 
racial and um, other systematic discriminations. <sighs> Sorry. So let me rephrase that. <clears throat> Okay, so it's better for groups to have an understanding of the underlying structures of racism and other forms of oppression. If we don't have these understandings of racism and other forms of oppression, we're never really gonna um, solve the problem, problem of diversity in tech. Um, oftentimes, diverse groups speak about just teaching people how to code. We can't just teach people how to code when they don't know how to handle harassment at work, when they don't know how to um, handle a sexist comment, when they don't know how to handle um, heterosexism in the workforce. We really need to train these individuals on how to be activists within their own workplaces. We really need to train them um, to understand um, the systematic racism, the systematic oppression that they're facing in their workplaces um, in order to properly address these issues. We need to train them how to be activists, pretty much. Um, and once people um, understand these underlying issues of systematic racism and oppression, um, they realize that um, cookie cutter diversity is not gonna cut it. Um, right now, tech has this sort of cookie cutter diversity where um, They just say, hey, look, we have a person of color. We're, we have a few people of color, and thus we are diverse. No, that is not the case. What we need in um, tech workspaces is we need more people of color who are leaders, not just workers. We need people of color who are tech leaders. And by creating these safe spaces, you're empowering them to have a voice, to voice out their concerns, and to eventually become leaders in their own workplaces. So a safe space also allows for training of these individuals. Um, an important type of training is the awareness of language that your workspace is using, whether it be in policies, whether it be in the everyday casual language um, that people are using. Um, are they being oppressive with the language that they're using? And um, language is very reflective of their culture. So if they're using sexist terms, if they're using um, homophobic jokes, homophobic slurs. We really need to address those issues um, and, and um, ensure that those workspaces have the proper cultural competency to deal with these issues. Um, <clears throat> oftentimes, marginalized people within tech spaces are um, interrupted and their voices are often invalidated. We need these safe spaces so their voices can be heard, so no one can interrupt them, so they could feel safe expressing their concerns with um, all the oppression that they're facing in their workforce or in other tech events, and to safely um, talk about and address these issues. If you you're not, if you're in an environment where your oppressor is there and you have people um, who don't have the same amount of privilege as um, another person they're not actually gonna voice their concerns. They're gonna, the communication dynamics are greatly gonna change and you're not really gonna solve any problems. This is why they need to safely meet in a space where they could freely express these ideas. Um, so I call, my call to action to all of y'all is to organize these safe spaces. Don't just talk to talk, but walk the walk. Um, I'm really tired of hearing just organizations saying we should get more women code, we should get more people of color. Let's create leaders, let's create activists within these communities. Let's no longer put up with um, the false hope that some of these organizations are giving us. Let's work harder to uh, make sure these issues are addressed. But um, let's ensure that we're addressing these issues of um, sexism and racism through um, you know, a critical um, discourse. It's very, impital, um, very vital, and um, we need our voices to be heard in a safe space. So that's pretty much my talk. Mm -hmm.